Asia's forests are home to some of the most unique habitats on Earth. Like the mythical Shangri-La, mention of these real places evokes visions of paradise in the imagination of the outsider. Yet for the people who call these forests home, life is far from idyllic. In Asia's uplands, 250 million people, nearly one quarter of the continent's absolute poor, eke out a meager existence. And despite the abundance that surrounds them, development has largely passed them by. Unfortunately, although millions of very poor families make their living adjacent to and even in the forests of Southeast Asia, they don't benefit from protecting those resources. Under a program known as RUPES, an international group of researchers is working to ensure that rewards for providing services of global value will materialize. The researchers are active on the ground, studying options that will help upland forest dwellers to care for their habitats while improving their lives and livelihood options. We are learning by doing. We are working at six action research sites across Asia. Bungo in the Jambi province of Indonesia is known for its rubber forests. Rubber was introduced here in the early 20th century and today Jambi is the second largest rubber producing province in Indonesia. Jambi is also part of a recognized hotspot of biodiversity. Animals such as the endangered Sumatran tiger still roam free here and Rafflesia, the world's largest flower, blooms. Bungo's rubber forests connect small and shrinking protected areas to the Crunchy Sablat National Park, functioning as essential corridors for wildlife movement. Yet this is also the site of some of the severest deforestation in Asia, and 75% of the people who live in Bungo earn incomes below the official Indonesian poverty line. On a daily basis, farmers are tempted to swap their rich, biodiverse jungle rubber with more profitable monocultures of oil palm or rubber. Rupes is helping Bungo's farmers make jungle rubber a viable option by taking advantage of other things besides rubber that their forests have to offer, such as fruit, rattan, and watershed services for hydropower. Farmers are also learning to increase the productivity of their rubber trees without damaging biodiversity, while exploring mechanisms such as eco-certification that can channel back to their households some of the benefits from caring for this globally valued habitat. The entire planet depends on forest ecosystems, for trees that provide vital carbon stocks and erosion control, for essential natural biodiversity, and for much, much more. At the same time, Farmers in the Rupes Project sites and throughout the world want to enjoy things that people in the city take for granted. Food security and a balanced diet, education and opportunities for their children, and good health services. Today, clearing forests and using farming techniques that destroy precious resources often seem to be their only option. Measures like the ones developed in Bungo can help them to contribute to conservation while improving their livelihoods and their futures. Upland farmers are guardians of natural resources. They are protecting them from degradation. They also act as stewards, restoring damaged ecosystem to productive state. By doing so, they uh, provide what we refer to as ecosystem services. Led by the World Agroforestry Center, RUPES consolidates the expertise and experience of international organizations, NGOs, and regional, national, and local entities. Together they are working to build awareness of the role of upland communities, ensure that they will be rewarded for their services, and encourage them to continue to provide them. In the Philippines, 
Rupes works in two ancestral domains that are also important watersheds, Bakun and Callahan. The tribal groups that live at these sites have a long history of interdependence with the forest. Kabalawan at hakayak niya parmer, paman inuman at atang iintulong niya kabalawan ni higak. Three major river systems converge in the Callahan Domain, yet wide expanses of its almost 120,000 acres have fallen prey to loggers and now lay barren. Rupes is helping the Callahan, as the people of the domain are called, to reverse this situation by quantifying the environmental services they provide. Today they are recording tree growth, mapping forests, measuring carbon sequestration, and monitoring water supplies. This data has produced surprising new findings about carbon sequestration, which they will bring forward to influence future revisions of the Kyoto Protocol. Developing knowledge and capacities prepares local people to take the next step, negotiating successful environmental service agreements. The Akalahan hope to eventually finance improvements in their education and health systems with the rewards from their environmental stewardship. They have also started a successful business processing and marketing jams and jellies from wild forest fruits. This diversifies their sources of income and helps to take the pressure off of farmland. An important first step in efforts to get something going is what we call scoping. It is finding out whether there is a common basis between the parties, a common level of understanding that could be the basis for site-specific negotiations of agreements. Cash payments are just one way of compensating environmental stewardship. Credit and market infrastructure may provide much needed solutions for one community, while land tenure, access to improved varieties, or better markets and extension services may be vital for others. So no single rewards can satisfy all situations. That's why we are studying an array of mechanisms to repay the environmental transfer benefits that will complement the poverty alleviation and environmental conservation. Rupes realizes that little can be achieved without the political will to establish equitable reward systems. In Kulakani, Nepal, they have built on this realization to match needs with opportunity. People in nearby Kathmandu and in locations throughout the country are highly dependent on the Kulakani Reservoir for electricity. This 374-foot-high dam feeds two power plants that supply 17% of the country's total hydropower capacity. But natural factors and human activity in the watershed led to massive deforestation, raising the levels of sedimentation in the reservoir and reducing production capacity. The government devised plans to control the sedimentation and trained the people of Kulakani to apply them. This included planting pine trees, which grew easily and well. Today, however, through Rupes, the people of Kulakani have found a voice for having more say in their future. With Rupes, they learned about ecosystem functioning. They now believe that the pine trees they planted reduced the capacity of the land to provide both watershed services and livelihoods. The pine trees do not produce fodder for their animals like other trees can, and the people note that the soil under the pine trees is dry, not moist like under broadleaf trees. They wonder, maybe the trees are hurting, not helping, water supplies. The local people are working with Rupes to develop alternative strategies, as well as a way of having more say in their own future. For instance, they have negotiated payments from the electrical company for the environmental benefits Kulakani provides and have set up a fund to manage these payments. This fund will support community projects that will enhance environmental services and alleviate poverty in Kulakani watershed. In Kulakani and elsewhere, special care is being taken to ensure that women, children, and other marginal groups are counted among the principal beneficiaries. Rupes has found that there are multiple dimensions to poverty. 
A very important one, however, is the lack of tenure and the conflict over access to lands between local communities and various levels of government agencies in many parts of Asia. That's the one we have to address first before other elements of Propur can come into play. High in the Bukit Barazan mountain range of Sumatra, Sumberjaya, whose name means source of wealth, is known for its fine coffees. Yet for the farmers of Sumberjaya, this richness has historically been associated with grief and displacement. Between 1991 and 96, the ruling military regime evicted entire families from their lands, fearing that farming would cause erosion and fill its new dam with silt. In desperation, these families saw their trees burn to the ground just as they were ready to be harvested. Thanks to rupees, today in Sumberjaya, these memories of exploitation and uprooting are being replaced by community empowerment, dialogue, and collaboration. Tanggal 20 Juli merupakan tanggal yang sangat bersejarah bagi kami kelompok KKM Wana Makmur, di mana di tanggal tersebut kami mendapatkan sertifikat izin dari pemerintah daerah yang menjamin kami untuk dapat mengelola hutan kawasan. Namun di balik itu semua kami dituntut harus memperhatikan lahan tersebut. Yang pertama mungkin dengan cara menanam, kemudian mempertahankan konservasi tanahnya. Together with Mr. Darmadi, the members of 18 communities representing some 6,400 farmers received permits to grow their coffee-based agroforestry systems while protecting the forests. Community forestry permits now cover 70% of the region's protected area versus 7% when Rubes began work there in 2004. By organizing people into groups, Rupes helps to ensure that benefits will reach not only the more well-to-do farmers who can afford the transaction costs, but also the poorest of the poor. Rupes' work is based on solid biological, environmental, and social science. This includes formal collection and analysis of the data that sellers, intermediaries, and buyers need to jointly devise successful reward systems. It also includes careful monitoring of the measures that have been put in place to ensure that the expected results are being achieved. As technology and transportation shrink the distances in our global village, the pace of modern life and the polish of consumerism create a gap between us and the people who maintain many of the assets we depend upon for our very existence. Rupes is working to close that gap by helping upland farmers to grasp the opportunities available to them, empowering them to negotiate for rewards, building trust and cooperation, and monitoring and sharing results. While Rupes researchers are realistic about the time it may take to realize many of the benefits, the results to date are boosting their confidence. The work is spreading to other sites and new countries such as Cambodia, China, and Vietnam are joining the program. Through RUPES, we can follow the agenda of the Millennium Development Goal, and at the same time, RUPES is also well placed in the international convention, including UNFCCC and CBD. RUPES, although young and growing, could provide us a basis for a major way of guiding national governments and many organizations to create this kind of collaborative mechanism for environmental payment systems, environmental reward systems that can in fact be a long-term way of helping to make our globe 
more healthy and productive.